said that fruit was bad. I said, no, no. I, I didn't. He manipulated my heart. So, oh, man. so what, this is Dr. Cassandra Forsyth. Forsyth, nice yeah. to meet you. Nice and this you. is Matt, Orange. Dr. Matt Orange. Dr. Matt Orange, nice okay. to meet you. Okay, so you had an article on fructose, but low fructose fruits, yes, so which is for those who maybe are more concerned, I mean, for the exceptions who may not be able to tolerate a lot of fruit, then you could specifically select a low fructose fruit, which I thought was fascinating. Yeah. And I actually, that article was from like 2000 and like... Two? Yeah, really? Yeah, it was 2000 Well, I found it probably in later. I think I found it around 2005. Yeah, I was, was a awesome. master student. And, and, yeah. and, yeah. and, and you wrote it and it was uh, for T Nation, right? Yes, I Amazing. Did I used to always write for T Nation. I recognized your name immediately. <laughs> and it's just like, I can't believe, like, what are the odds that, that that would be, this would be you. It's so amazing. So, um, but this uh, study, which we could probably go on for days with that about the. You should the reach out to me. We'll, to, we'll, do yeah. a whole, we'll do a Skype video yeah. on it. I actually have a video on. Um, uh, does fructose cause fatty liver? But I reference fruit and how it hasn't been shown to be the case. In fact, it's been the opposite. Yes. Because yes. fruit, even though it stands for fruit sugar, fruit's not 100% fructose, and there's so many other substances in fruit that Absolutely. kind of balance it out yep. and so forth. Fibers. You know what I mean? Yep. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Phytochemicals. So, every day. Yeah. so your study here was, uh, you said you're. This is kind of like unprecedented in that. You're trying to establish new norms for push us from the toes for women. Yeah, yeah. So right now, if you were to do fitness testing um, for women, you would do push-ups on your knees. Because Correct. There is actually no normative tables uh, for women to do push-ups on their toes. So we How felt like that was dis a disservice to doing? females, mm -hmm. especially now with the increase in fitness and. Um, it's a different the, time now. It's a different time. I mean, we got CrossFit, we got powerlifters, we got everything out there. Um, so this is actually just part of one of uh, part of our research that just looked at the correlation between hand grip and push-up performance, but the whole point of this purpose is to try to create a new normative table that shows the range of push-up performance in women on their toes. And how many uh, subjects were there? It was so far. We're uh, cl we're at 98. We're close to 100. Okay. But our goal is it, to try to get 200 to 300. In this study, how many? Uh, uh, what do we have? 98 well, we, on this, right? 95. Yeah. 95. Well, yeah, yeah. I dropped a couple out. So there yep. were some who did zero. There is some that did zero. You had one who did 47? We had one that did 47. Who is she? I'd like to meet her. Uh, she was a... Uh, we can't, uh, we can't discuss that. She was, oh, okay. She was, uh, that's, that's well, she oh, was there in we the go. reserve. She was in the Army National Guard. She's, so she's beast. I can't tell you who she was, but she's she just beast. kept going. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, she was very What determined. was the norm on the push-up? So that was the range, zero to 47. What yeah. was that mean? 9.6 now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. 9.8 for the oh, design Sorry, 9.8. And the push-ups are, 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 are kind of like more close grip, huh? Well, oh, this is just a drawing. Yeah, but, oh. so you, you, the hands are placed about oh. a, a, a little bit wider than shoulder width. Apart. So it's kind of like yeah. standard ACSM uh, no. uh, well, position? Well, elbows do need to stay at a 45 degree angle right. so that triceps are right. recruited yeah. or cannot touch before chest. Um, so it's a 45 degree angle of the humerus yeah. between the shoulder and the, and the yeah. torso. Yeah, I right. I mean, it's not close grip. It's no, not yeah. the, the well, if it's close, you know, PE push-ups. Yeah. Well, that's, you know. that's, that's rotator cuff havoc and then close yes. tricep over use. Yeah. So the midpoint's good. Yeah. So yeah. That's good. Yeah. So so that's our goal. I mean, we're halfway there because we're at close to 100, but we want to get at least 200. Yeah, definitely want to know when it gets published. I'd like to see the norms because I'm probably want to uh, incorporate them among because I'm a personal trainer, so yeah. we can start to incorporate this yeah. push up Some protocol. Fitness testing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like, have That's you heard of idea. Rank yeah. Fit? Um, so it's a CrossFit ranking system they created. I saw it at uh, a fitness conference at a couple years ago, and they, you know, same thing for push ups for women. I said, well, what is it on your toes or your knees? And they said, oh, knees, because there's nothing for women on your yeah. toes. So you can't even compare what you are to I love the it. population. No, I love it. I think, yeah. I think that's. Yeah, yeah so I, I, th I, th I think everyone will, will get on board with it. Yeah, for so sure. From fructose to push ups, so that's where like. There took we me. go. <laughs> I love it. Thank you very much. Okay, this is thanks. great. All right. Thank you. Louisiana, and my question is for the first presenter, Dr. Lonecki. What are some of the changes at the muscle level not related to neural change that are independent of muscle size?
right now. But there's a, a lot of uh, things that happen at the muscle level as it relates to fatigue, right? That can be depressed and turned down and things like that. There, there, it, it, it's possible that maybe some of those can also be modified, maybe modify calcium release and things of that order. I don't know if that's true. I don't want that to leave and like that's another, that's now a mechanism of strength. I don't know that that's true. But I, I think it's mostly I just wanted to highlight that I, I think we have to be careful that we don't fall into the trap of if I say that's not necessarily muscle growth, then it has to be neuro. I don't want to discount that there could be things at the purple level that maybe are independent of any change in the actual cross sectional area. And that would fall under kind of a, an improvement of muscle overall quality. Skeletal muscles are composed of bundles of muscle fibers. Muscle fibers are long cylindrical cells containing several nuclei. Muscles will contract or relax when they receive signals from the nervous system. A neuromuscular junction is the site of the signal exchange. Muscle fibers are composed of many myofibrils. A myofibril contains contractile units called sarcomeres. Each sarcomere consists of alternating thick and thin protein filaments, giving skeletal muscle its striated appearance. The muscle contracts when these filaments slide past each other. The thick filaments are myosin. The thin filaments are composed of the protein actin. The sarcomere shortens from both sides when actin filaments slide along the myosin filaments. Although the action between the filaments is described as sliding, the myosin filament actually pulls the actin along its length. The cross bridges of the myosin filaments attach to the actin filaments and exert force on them to move. This action is known as the sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction. Muscle contractions are controlled by the actions of calcium. The thin actin filaments are associated with regulatory proteins called troponin and tropomyosin. When a muscle is relaxed, tropomyosin blocks the cross-bridge binding sites on actin. When calcium ion levels are high enough and ATP is present, calcium ions bind to the troponin, which displaces tropomyosin, exposing the myosin binding sites on actin. This allows myosin to attach to a binding site on actin, forming a cross-bridge. As the actin and myosin slide along each other, the entire sarcomere shortens as the Z lines draw closer to the M line. As the sarcomeres in myofibrils contract, the entire muscle fiber will shorten. So I've got about 53 and a half to 54 in a grip strength using this grip dominometer. Got 54 on the left, so I'll go ahead and pop up those norms.